Boris Johnson set to bulldoze EU rules and restrictions. At least that seems to be the implication of a very interesting phone call we're now hearing reported between the PM, uh, senior government officials and business leaders. As ever, guys, you can rely on me on the channel to bring you all the very latest. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss future reports would really help me out. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up as well. Would really appreciate if you could do that. Now, in a move that the Financial Times have described as potentially setting alarm bells ringing in Brussels, that can't be a bad thing, can it? We've seen Boris Johnson, a Yahoo Finance report, asking business leaders what EU rules to ditch. Now we're outside, of course, of EU control, the EU transition period. That as they report, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is asking business leaders to help him decide which EU rules to keep and which to ditch. Johnson asked 250 business leaders for their input on reform during a call on Wednesday, Bloomberg reported. The Prime Minister said he wanted to hear what rules should be reformed in order to make life easier for businesses. And those of you who regularly watch the channel will know that this idea of gaining, of seizing... Brexit competitive advantage of seizing the magnificent opportunities of being a self-governing independent nation. It's something I'm positively evangelical about, unlike those miserable Remainers. And of course, I was fiercely resistant to the whole concept of the so-called EU level playing field. We know that the EU, on one hand, said there's no advantage to Brexit, and on the other hand, wanted to try and cut off Brexit competitive advantage by getting the UK to sign up to all sorts of restrictions. Well, just to remind you of the ERG's verdict on the deal that was agreed in the end, as they pointed out, it contains a provision for the termination on 12 months notice and that the level playing field clauses in the deal do go further than in comparable trade agreements, but their impact on the practical exercise of sovereignty is likely to be limited if addressed by a robust government. In any event, they do not prevent the UK from changing its laws as it sees fit at risk of tariff countermeasures. And if those were unacceptable, the agreement could be terminated on 12 months notice. That something to bear in mind as we go through this. Now, as the FT report, Boris Johnson calls for business support over regulatory change. That's the word here, guys, change. PM's rallying call for corporate leaders could set alarm bells ringing in Brussels, according to the Financial Times. Boris Johnson called on business leaders on Wednesday to get behind plans for regulatory and legislative reform in a move that could attract the attention of Brussels officials over the prospect of a rapid divergence from EU rules by the UK. In a call with 250 leading business figures, the, uh, Boris Johnson sought to rally business support for his vision for the UK after Brexit urging them to grasp the opportunities that come from leaving the EU. The call was also attended by Chancellor Rishi Sunak, Business Secretary Alex Sharma and International Trade Secretary Liz Truss, who, as I've highlighted on this channel, has been doing a load of deals all over the world that we were told would take years and couldn't be done. Well, she's gone out and done them. Johnson in this call, asking business groups and top executives to come up with ideas about how to change regulations in the UK to support future economic growth. The UK would need reg regulatory and legislative change, he said. That could ring alarm bells in the EU, the FT say. As the Telegraph report made clear, attendees were urged on this call not to diverge what was said on the call, but one boss said the message was that Brexit is done, finished, over, and he wants to move on and embrace the future now. The uncertainty is over. He was bubbling for, uh, with enthusiasm for it and about doing things the way we want. Ministers signalled their intention to strike through the red tape and bureaucracy created by regulations from Brussels and called on firms to step forward with ideas for how to streamline British rules, another attendee said. And I really do hope this happens because... Sadly, what we saw from 2016 was rather than people embracing and accepting the referendum result, in all too many cases, elements of the establishment simply sought to try and water down or stop Brexit completely, rather than contribute in a positive manner uh, and recognise the opportunities now afforded to this great country now that we've left 
the EU. Interesting as well to see that the governor of the Bank of England has warned that the Britain must not become a rule taker of Brussels mandates on financial services in the next stage of the Brexit talks. Andrew Braley, the governor of the Bank of England, said the UK must be able to make its own rules for the city, even if it means EU authorities refusing to allow access to markets across the channel. If the UK agreed to e take EU rules, it would be bound by to follow Brussels decisions, even when regulators in London thought they were unsuitable for British banks or even threatened financial stability. So right across the board here, we seem to be in a, a situation where the establishment now hopefully accept that we're going to be an independent self-governing nation and that the idea of simply blindly following whatever the EU does is stuff of yesteryear. This is about driving home Brexit competitive advantage by taking back control, as was said during the referendum, and gaining Brexit competitive advantage. That is the heart of at all of this. Now, as for what the government themselves are saying about this call, they say that this afternoon the Prime Minister hosted a call with almost 250 business leaders alongside the Chancellor, Business Secretary and Trade Secretary. He opened the call by recognising 2020 has been a tough year for businesses across the country, thanking them for their huge efforts to help keep the country moving and looking ahead to the rollout of the vaccine as a source of hope this year. On the agreement reached with the EU, the Prime Minister committed to working with British businesses to realise the vast opportunities on offer as the UK forges an independent future and welcomed that firms can now look with certainty at the year ahead. He set out the government's urgent ambition to unite and level up across the country by investing in education, skills, technology and infrastructure. And as for the scare stories, and I will touch on it again, as for the scare stories that we heard about the chaos that was going to unfold in Dover, well as Conservative MP John Redwood highlights, a week after Brexit and Dover Port is working fine, still no apologies from the Project Fear commentators and media forecasters. Once again, guys, Project Fear shown to be an absolute load of nonsense. A great future ahead for an independent self-governing UK. Of course, what you do with that freedom now is down to the British government. I hope they're brave. I hope they're bold. I hope they're radical. I hope they take that Brexit competitive advantage. But I would say this call with business leaders and the tone of it from the government is encouraging. We must break free from EU rules, restrictions, ensure that we gain full Brexit competitive advantage. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you make of all of this. We'd love to hear what you're making of all of this. And as ever, if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful and informative, please do help me out by giving this video a big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. And of course, you can become a member here on the channel by hitting the join button. See the link in the top pinned comment to become a member. And of course, guys, as ever, Thanks for watching.